Hi, Pradvira, sir. Hello, hi. Uh, I'm Lokesh from Gulte. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for giving us, you know, wonderful films like Lucifer, Bro Daddy, and of course, a, you know, quite spicy song like Dream Home, Wake Up Home, everything, you were there on everything. Sir, three months ago when I watched the trailer, first of all, you uh, made me experience a different kind of emotion. I felt like, you know, watching, uh, I, do, I don't know, it's not exaggeration actually, it's like watching Zim Cavazel, you know, from Passion of the Christ, so wow. that kind of feels you have given. So, what exactly, you know, there are a lot of survival thrillers, there are a lot of survival and rescue thrillers, and recently Malayalam industry has given Manjimal Boys as well. So, what exactly made you pick this film, sir? Because in all, in almost all the survival thrillers, it will be like, you will be lost somewhere, maybe cheated or something, <laughs> you will be lost somewhere, and finally, how you, you know, reach your destination or what happens to you is, a, is going to be a simple story, actually. So, uh, what made you, because in all survival thrillers, the element is going to be the same, actually. So, what is that so different or what is that, you know, what made you actually pick Najib's life, you know, to be uh, translated to the silver screen? So, like you rightly said, survival in itself is a very universal theme. And what appeals uh, to our conscience about survival is because it speaks on the resilience of the human spirit. Whatever circumstances you are faced with, however big the challenges are, how unfavorable the odds are, deep down the human mind has this amazing resilience, this strength to actually be able to overcome all that. So that is a universal theme that in any adaptation, any form, it always appeals to you. You're, you're right, you know, survival thrillers, survival adventures, survival films will all have a common thread running through them. But this film is not just about survival, you know. Uh, it's a very unique, uh, deeply meditative character study as well. Because there is this man who's taken from a world full of water. So Najib, before going to the deserts, he was a free diving sand miner. In the early 90s, people used to dive down into the riverbed and take sand for construction. Now it is banned, it is illegal, you can't do that now. But those days it was a flourishing industry. So that was his job, that was what he used to do. And people who uh, used to do that job, their days are like four to six hours, they're underwater. So their world is full of water. And then he lands up where even the air has no moisture. He's not given water to drink. He's not given water to wash himself. There is no water, you know. Slowly, he has no one to speak his language to. Because uh, two people who he sees, they don't know his language. He doesn't know their language. Slowly, he stops speaking. He stops, he begins to lose the ability to articulate. He can no longer form a sentence. And then three years later, when you see the person in the film, you realize that, He's actually now probably more animal than human. Because for three years, he's only been with the animals. He's only interacted with them. He's only lived with them. The only living creatures he's been speaking to are the animals, the goats and the camels. So that metamorphosis is, I think, very unique to Najib's story. I don't think there has been another story said in the world where a human mind and a human body goes through that kind of a physical, physiological, mental and emotional metamorphosis through the character arc. So that was very interesting for me. Sir, but while doing the physical transformation, you know, there's just a lot of uh, star heroes and star heroines, whenever they're putting on weight and losing weight, they're actually going through a lot of health complications. So, but what made you take the risk and, you know, take up 31 kilos, losing, putting on weight, gaining weight and again losing 31 kilos is no joke actually. No, so it's not a joke. Yeah, <laughs> didn't you worry about the, you know, health complications that might arise? Yeah, I did. See, in 2009 when Blessy Sir offered me the film, I was still a very young actor, okay? Very young actor, trying to find my space in the industry. I was doing fairly well for myself, but still I was trying to find my space in the industry. And Blessy Sir was uh, the most coveted director in Malayalam industry, he even today is. Every actor, every actress wants to do that one Blessy film at least. He's like that to us. I don't know if you've seen his other films. If you haven't, you should, okay? You should see all his films. So at that point in time, a director known for um, eliciting fantastic performances from great legendary actors. Like his first film was with Mamuka, uh, second film was with Mamuka again, then he did films with Mohanlal sir. All of them have, in fact, even some of Mamuka's, Mamuti sir's and Mohanlal sir's best performances are in the, in, 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 you know, recent history, is often Blessy films. So such a filmmaker, for his dream film, for the most complex character that he has ever created, or he has ever adapted, comes to a young actor, and tells me, I want you to do this. So immediately I know the whole industry is jealous of me. Uh, I would be jealous of somebody who got this opportunity to do Najib. 
So what is the one thing that I should promise myself? That I will not let anyone see the film and say, I could, he could have tried more. He could have put in some more effort. Either I do the film or I don't do the film. I decided to do the film. When I do something, I do it 120%. So, cool sir. Is, sir, what is the source of inspiration, sir, to accepting these kind of scripts? Uh, um. So, basically, it's a deep love of cinema. Uh, because I don't know anything else in life. I'm 12th standard pass, actually. No other further qualification. I know other, no other job. If I don't have films, there is no company that will hire me because I have no qualification. Okay, so my whole life is about cinema only. I have a deep love of cinema. Uh, secondly, um, it's a very, very inspiring true story, you know, and wonderfully adapted for the screen by Blessy Sir. And thirdly, like I said, the most coveted, the highest paid director of Malayalam industry is telling you that for the next 16 years, whatever happens, I'm going to be behind this one film because this is my dream film. And he's chosen you, he's, you know, he's uh, picked you for the main responsibility of that vision. So what further inspiration do you need? You know, it's a very big inspiration actually. Sir, what would be the major changes uh, to observe yourself after completion of this journey? Uh, Sir, when I said yes to the film, I was not married, I was not a father, I had not turned producer, I had not turned director, I had not turned distributor. I was, what, 25 years old, 24 years old, you know. So life has changed <laughs> for the past so many years, uh, so many phases of my life I have traversed through and, and the one constant is Adjivitham is happening, Adjivitham film is happening. So I, I keep saying, you know, on the 28th of March, for me it is not a film release. It is like one big chapter of my life culminating. So, let's see. <laughs> Sir, can we expect the film to go to any you know, Oscars and or some other bigger platforms where you, you can like bring us one more award? Because you, have, you already have a Rahman Sir and Rizal Pukuti, the two Oscar winners. So, we really hope so. We really hope that, uh, of course, I mean, going to the Academy, uh, acad vying for an Academy Award and all, also entails a lot of other things like a very big campaign. We have to now set up a campaign for the film, etc. Uh, in all honesty, all the money we had, we have put into making the film. That is the truth. So now hopefully, when the film releases, some big studio or somebody will see the film and tell us, uh, yeah, someone like, yeah, Ravi Garu, somebody will tell us, sir, you have to do, an, uh, do a proper Los Angeles campaign and maybe Jimmy can help us. Uh, because uh, the, that is, I'm being very honest here, huh? like, uh, the, this, uh, this is a very, very expensive film. For Malayalam, for Telugu, it's okay. For Malayalam, it's a very, very expensive film. In fact, probably the most expensive film ever made in Malayalam. So, we really don't have any more money. <laughs> Maybe, uh, sir, Maitri Ravi, sir, will put in. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, all hopes on Ravi, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sir, uh, I'd like to talk to Blessy, sir. Uh, sir, actually, you know, you, you selected a finest actor and all, but when we are talking about budgets, uh, the moment you see the trailer, you feel like, okay, this is all shot in the desert. So, why did it actually need, you know, 80 crore budget to be put in? Uh, is it like you spent more on the quality sound or is it because of the visuals or you had you used any VFX? Actually, we uh, first we think to start the desert in Rajasthan, but uh, we can't find any uh, deep desert there. And also, uh, the gods are very uh, different in uh, Arabian gods and Indian gods are li like that. So many uh, herders was there. Uh, and also, in 2018, uh, money value for U.S. dollar was only 60 rupees, I, don't I, I think, I think, and I think in, that was only in 16. Now it's 82, 83, 85, like that. So that fluctuation is also affected, and we spend a lot of money uh, for the COVID situations and all. And also we found very beautiful location in, we shot in, uh, desert around 150 days. So that all are very expensive. And uh, you know, uh, Mr. A.R. Rahman Rasul Pogoti, 
uh, all technicians are uh, very good technician in India itself. So, uh, understood, sir. Uh, sir, Ravi, sir. Sir, we uh, already put goat life for Malayalam cinema. Most again in April, I think you are releasing Manjumal Boys as well. I think a date uncle is sir. Adi. Oh, I got the same survival and uh, rescue thriller. Right? That, that is, that is because you are fan of that uh, kind of genres or. Sir, we are basically fan of Malayalam films. <laughs> and uh, and uh, content rich films and I see not necessarily Ide, Ide and Chapur de Ogani. Ide, Ide, Andrek Nache, the Ente and Nazangana content rich films that comes from Malayalam industry. And Edi, okay, open fact, eh? we love those films. And also, Manjimal Boys, we were trying for that film since a long time. And uh, again, hopefully, we may do that. And uh, this film run and everything sufficient ka saripay naake, then uh, we, are, we are going to release the thing. And Pridvira Jugar te on a standalone film on a plan just now, sir. Definitely, sir. Our chance raava lega ne si sure shot. You know one thing, we have missed him in some very very big film. But the thing is, okay. Eh? Uh, and uh, again, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we used to approach him. And uh, Pridvira Jugar si ante ay na gurinchi mano kotha ke chipku ne dehle. Yenni, yenni sarlu, chal chal atlo, nai sir. Try jasta na. Missed film I want to ask earlier. I wanted to ask actually. I think you. Other release I pen. You sir asked you for yeah. Saira. Then you yeah. said you were shooting odd kalam. I think again they approached you for Godfather. Again you said. No sir. For I was very worried that Chiranjeevi sir will think I am lying because I keep telling, repeating this story. You know, in 2017 or 18, I think uh, Chiranjeevi sir through Suhasini ma'am, Maniratnam sir's uh, wife Suhasini ma'am had gotten in touch with me to play a role in Saira Narasim Haradi. And uh, I was very flattered because Chiranjeevi sir thinking of me for a big role is for me like a big certificate, you know. Uh, so that time I told him, really sorry sir, you know, I would love to have worked with you but I've just committed to this, I've just started, not committed, I was beginning to shoot this film that I've been waiting for for 10 years. So I have to grow my beard and lose weight and all that. And sir told me no problem and he understood. I think four years later when uh, I had become a director, I had directed one film and that film released and it had become a hit in Kerala. Chiranjeevi sir had bought the rights to that film. And also, Saira Narasimha Reddy was releasing. So, for the Kerala event of Saira Narasimha Reddy, when Chiranjeevi sir came, I was the chief guest for the event. Um, so, at that time, Chiranjeevi sir's team uh, was pitching the idea, asking me, why, why don't you think of directing uh, Lucifer in uh, Telugu also? Then I am telling Chiranjeevi sir, sir, I would have loved to, sir, but unfortunately there is this big film that I am doing, sir, for which I have to grow my beard, I have to do. And he's like, hey, four years ago you said the same story. <laughs> that actually happened and I had forgotten that I had told that same excuse. Uh, but uh, I hope Chiranjeevi sir's team has uh, conveyed it as actually true. Uh, but no, Chiranjeevi sir actually, you know, mm, uh, he's such a sweet person. Uh, he messages me. Uh, he once in a while and uh, you know he, he keeps in touch so does Ram and he messaged me the day Godfather released uh, and uh, yeah and I'm, I'm hoping someday I'll be able to work with him.